Hello everyone. Let us see the birth of the wind tunnel. Researchers use the wind tunnel to learn about how an aircraft will fly. By then, the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, that is NACA, was founded in 1915. The NACA is a precursor of the NASA. The AWT allowed the researcher to systematically study the behavior of the models. The wind tunnels are the large tubes with the air blowing through them. The tunnels are used to replicate the actions of the object flying through the air or moving along the ground. The researchers used the wind tunnel to learn how an aircraft will fly. So back then in the earliest wind tunnels were invented towards the end of the 19th century in the early days of the research when many attempted to develop a successful heavier than air flying machines the wind tunnel was eventual as means of reversing the usual palindrome instead of air standing still and an object moving at the speed through it the frank h wehman built the first wind tunnel in 1871 The AWT was initially built to simulate the altitude condition normally encountered by aircraft at 50000 feet A giant fan here circulates air up to speed of 400 miles per hour while simultaneously the vacuum pumps raise the tunnel altitude from ground level to 50000 feet Also since high altitude air is much colder this refrigeration equipment cools the circulating air to provide a more realistic altitude simulation This was the AWT in 1943 and almost immediately it was put to work to improve the performance of World War II combat aircraft The tunnel made its first vital contribution by solving a cooling problem but affected the operation of B29 engines in World War II the large wind tunnel were built during the World War II that was a strategic importance during the cold war of development of supersonic aircrafts and missiles so back then the wind tunnel envisioned as a means of reversing the usual platform and instead of air standing still and an object moving through it the wind tunnel provide almost realistic and accurate forms of study of various shaped models nowadays the different types of wind tunnels are used for different environment and speed parameter requirements the wind tunnel are progressively used to simulate the air foils that can be incorporated for the models many largest wind tunnels can give place for most of the full scaled models of aircrafts these work on the principle of compression and suctions the wind tunnels the valuation obtained by the wind tunnels will account for 98% of actual operations of the models So nowadays the wind tunnel gives an accurate idea how the model can fly through air so this is the one of the most important component in nowadays to obtain the progress in aeronautics so friends let us see how wind tunnel works air is blown or sucked through the duct equipment with a weaving port where the models or the geometrics are mounted for the study typically the air is moved through the tunnel using the series of fans due to the sheer volume and speed of air movement required the fans may be powered by stationary turbofan engine due to the effects of viscosity the wind tunnel is typically circular than square it provides a smoother flow the pressure also 
across the surface of the models can be measured if the model includes the pressure taps so there are some limitations for the wind tunnel those are the limitations in size so almost everything has to be scaled down which changes the aerodynamic characteristics like Reynolds number the limitations in motions the aircraft maneuvers are difficult to simulate it influences the flow boundary and the same sort of cloning this is the classification of wind tunnels the low speed wind tunnel high speed wind tunnel supersonic wind tunnel hypersonic wind tunnel subsonic and transonic wind tunnel and high enthalpy wind tunnel so let us see a problem a nozzle ab as shown below leading to the test section of the low speed subsonic wind tunnel has a contraction ratio of 10 is to 1 the pressure difference across the nozzle is maintained at 1000 newton per meter square and density ratio of the air is 1.23 kg per meter cube assuming one dimensional steady in viscosid flow the velocity in the test section as measured at point b is dash meter per second so we know that the formula for v2 that is velocity is equal to root of 2 into p1 minus p2 divided by rho into 1 minus of area ratio square so p1 minus p2 is equal to 1000 newton per meter square so a2 by a1 that will be the ratio is equal to given 1 divided by 10 so let us take it as 1 divided by 10 and we know the density that is also given that is 1.23 kg per meter cube 1.23 kg per meter cube so substitute all these values in uh, v2 that is a given formula known formula so that is v2 is equal to root of root of root 2 into we know p1 minus p2 is 1000 so density is 1.23 and area is 1 divided by 10 square so upon calculating this we get v2 is equal to 40.5 meter per second 40.5 meter per second hello guys this information was useful to you i think so so if you are not yet subscribed please subscribe the officer aerospy channel see you in the next video